Teardown time. This is an antenna for receiving terrestrial television. Uh, is in fact an active antenna. It's the Monoprice HDA3700. Um, and that's first, the first interesting thing. There's a power inlet coming into it and of course the antenna back to the TV set. So it means there has to be some sort of amplifier in this product. It's obviously a physically small antenna. It's probably meant for picking up uh, signals uh, when you're in a situation like a condo where it's hard to mount a proper antenna on the roof. Let's uh, look at the engineering inside. Okay, just remove the back off here. Interesting, there's actually two antennas. They're made out of uh, some sort of very thin metal tube, and of course they go onto this circuit board. Let's uh, take this out and flip it over and uh, see if we can find the main amplifier. Okay, a model of simplicity. Um, actually, some fairly interesting things. There's an integrated circuit here. It looks like a transistor, but it's actually marked at U2. No other useful markings on it, so I'll have to de-encapsulate that to see actually what it's looking like. I'll just put an inset picture of these lovely air inductors here. Haven't seen these in a very long time. Uh, almost uh, hand formed it looks like um, and providing of course some inductance uh, you don't need a lot in the RF frequency domain so it's also a uh, single-sided circuit board uh, which explains why it was so inexpensive next step of analysis is to take this small little integrated circuit and do what's called de-encapsulation which is removing the uh, packaging in an acid bath so I can take a, this particular photograph looking downwards uh, this one's actually uh, so interesting I'm going to analyze it by hand with a pen here uh, rather than trying to uh, draw the annotations on the screen. So when I started the analysis, I thought for certain this might be the amplifier, and of course, no way, this is definitely a voltage regulator. Let's see how we can figure that out. Uh, two pads here, and uh, this is an NPN transistor, and this here is an NPN transistor. If you look at the construction, it's the emitter-based collector always. Um, so the pad here is basically going to the collector of two large power transistors. On here, uh, basically, it doesn't go directly to the emitter. There's uh, two resistances going between these two transistors. If we draw that like a schematic, we can quickly see that what we're looking at are the series pass transistors of a voltage regulator. Input here, output here, of course, two in parallel. These resistors here are used to balance out the current so one uh, transistor doesn't get uh, all of it and one other one gets starved because that would be a bit of a disaster. So classic bit of uh, engineering with bipolars, common uh, base control. Okay, so that's the in and out. There must then be a voltage uh, input for the reference, and it'll be down here. This is a classic uh, ESD clamping diode here. That's uh, that classic circuit of two diodes in series. Voltage comes in, and what you want to do is make sure if you go over the substrate voltage, it, it clamps on. Otherwise, you can get a phenomena called latch up. So, a uh, real strong indication that's the voltage reference feedback. And then uh, three uh, PNP transistors, uh, lateral PNPs. And the emitter is in the middle, and if you look, these two emitters are clearly connected together, and this emitter is connected together here. That's a pretty classic pattern, I'm pretty sure, for a band gap reference. And uh, of course that gives us all the building blocks for a classic linear regulator. Uh, a power transistor here, uh, limiting the current as required. You get a sense feedback coming in, so it can feedback the current and figure out where it's at. And uh, feedback the voltage, pardon me. And there's a, this band gap reference here, so the circuitry here basically adjusts the current flowing through the transistor, which adjusts the voltage. Uh, and of course, that's a classic linear regulator. If you want to take a look at the die in more detail, I will have that on my blog. It's uh, very easily traced, this one, since it's only about a dozen transistors. What else? Oh, here are these little things here. They're kind of like vias on a circuit board, but they're basically connecting the metal uh, down into different layers. So, um, no markings on the chips. Not sure what it is. I'm sure it's just a generic... Uh, uh, voltage regulator from a vendor uh, deep inside uh, China. So if we look at this back of the circuit board and start tracing from the antenna into this other integrated circuit, you can see it goes capacitor, resistor, capacitor, and then there's a six-pin device. We'll uh, drop that into a uh, decapsulation as well and uh, figure out what the die looks like. Um, and uh, here we go. This is, um, <laughs> you probably can't see it actually. It's uh, well under a, a millimeter on square. It's actually in this little puddle of uh, uh, oil I was using to uh, image it uh, under my microscope. But let's uh, pop up the actual dye photograph and uh, here we have it. Um, an even simpler actual function than the uh, voltage regulator, probably no more than about six transistors here, uh, but all very much handcrafted for that uh, RF domain. It uh, looks like it's a classic amplifier with some sort of enabled pin. So there we go. Um, I'll also throw that one on my blog if you'd like to take a closer look at that as well. Uh, there are some part numbers on it, but they don't seem to trace down to any specific vendor that I could find. Well, let's take a closer look at these two antennas. They're actually kind of interesting. Uh, this one here is longer and uh, goes to essentially what it's a ground plane. 
Uh, and then this one here is in parallel to it, so it's a structure, actually I haven't seen that before in RF design, so obviously what you need is a differential voltage being pulled from the uh, atmosphere, of course, to create a signal you want to amplify. Now this length of this antenna here will probably tell us a tremendous amount about it, and if you measure it, it's around 125 millimeters. And if you go into an antenna table looking for what's known as a quarter wavelength, that uh, translates to about a 600 megahertz antenna. And that's smack dab in the middle of the UHF uh, terrestrial TV band in North America. So real confirmation that we're looking for something that uh, is amplifying uh, TV signals. Well, there you go. Sort of a wealth of engineering you can figure out. Uh, you can measure the length of this metal here and figure out what uh, kind of antenna this is. Without even knowing what it was meant for, you can quickly figure out its operating frequency. Uh, so really interesting looking at that voltage regulator. We saw the classic building blocks of uh, series pass transistors and uh, band gap references and some clamping functions. On the back there, there's that little tiny uh, RF amplifier, sort of a classic a bit of uh, engineering. And uh, there you go. There's just a, a world of engineering, even the most uh, mundane things in your house.